What's going on, everyone? Uh, here we are starting a new build. So this is my third Steel Shank Singer number two build, and basically I'm going to incorporate a lot of the, the things I've learned over the first two builds into this build, um, and this is using my, quote, production chassis, the ones that folks are starting to receive this week um, with the custom wraps and everything with your name on it, not mine, uh, because you're the builder. You should feel some pride and have some visuals to complement it um, with your name on it. So anyway, um, so this build series is for those who are going to be putting this together, and hopefully I can stay a little bit ahead of where you are, but um, feel free to deviate. A lot of your questions should be answered up here on this layout. Even if you're doing the, the PCB version, um, it's very easy to follow and adapt the eyelet point to point over to, to your um, circuit board. So anyway, I kind of wanted to step through the heater wiring because last build, uh, you might have seen that I had a hum. And Herman, first uh, from uh, my Instagram friends, brought this to my attention that, hey, maybe take a look at um, military-style heater wiring uh, that was in like an old 1950s book. And, I, you know, it may, it may be a good fit for this. It may not be a good fit everywhere, like over here, but I think you... Um, I think it's a good approach, and I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Hopefully take some good visuals so you get an idea of what's going on here. But basically, I have uh, the black wire going to this pin. The other black wire goes to this pin. I'm running the wi these white wires, sort of twisting them together, creating a short distance. So the only thing that's, like, not, um, per uh, you know, phase canceled because of the twist is this little tiny jump between the two from here to there. So we're sort of minimizing any sort of introduction to noise on this line. But, uh, so here we go. So run the wire up, connect the two here. I am changing, I normally do 18 gauge, um, but I've done the calculations and we can definitely, confidently get away with uh, 20 gauge. So this is 20 gauge wire from Home, uh, not Home Depot, Tube Depot high heat. Uh, someone on Instagram reached out to me and asked me if I had any concerns with the tubes being hot, melting the wire, and creating a short. Um, I'm pretty confident because this uh, coating is rated for 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So that, even my soldering iron at 670 degrees does not really melt this um, insulation. So I believe that we're good there and 600 volts, really good stuff. Uh, Pre-tinned all the way through, stranded, high current capacity. I think this is great wire for us to use here. So um, you're gonna notice that there's a jump, this jumper right here, which on the diagram is uh, called out. There is no real jumper here. There's this wire that goes, connects over there, um, but we can get that out of the way. So basically the idea here is to keep this wire away from any signals and away from anything because here is electromagnetic field that's created using this AC line um, together and it's high current. So the higher current in an AC um, electrical, you know, whatever wave does create more of a electromagnetic field, which means that the distance that you need to create between this wire and other wires, other sensitive wires, is a little bit greater. But I'm confident that this isn't. Uh, this is way overkill, and hopefully going to be good for this approach. So now I've spent four minutes talking about heater wiring. Let me talk a little bit more about over here. Um, for this pin, I didn't do it the optimal way, which is what I did do. This is optimal, in my opinion. You run the wire underneath, and then this little tiny jumper to hold that white wire in place and to connect the two that's required over here um, on, on pin five, uh, four and five is a lead. So I got a, a stack of them over here from a 6PS capacitor. Those leads are a lot thicker than your standard um, resistor leads. So I, I use them just for peace of mind. For the reverb over here, SL Amps reached out also on my Instagram and said to be careful around your reverb, and you're absolutely right. So my approach here 
is more of a traditional style of what I've done before. Keeping the, the, the heater wire away, because if I put it, ran it through here, I would not have enough room uh, without making these silly bridges, kind of like what I did over here. And I don't think these are silly. I think that's actually functional and not that sensitive. Um, but I'm keeping that wire away from here. Now, why did I go to the right and not to the left? Because I feel like going to the left would be just slightly easier. And that's because on the if you look at the drawing here, components live on the left-hand side, not on the right-hand side. So if I take that wire and, and run that heater wire over on this side, there's going to be less chance that that magnetic field is going to be um, picked up by a, a, a component that's nearby. So another thing, you might notice that there's like this kink here that goes down and straight over. Why didn't I just run a, you know, kind of like a, a tangent, if you will? And that's because back when I was studying electrical engineering, the electromagnetic field, you're going to get crosstalk if you run a wire alongside of another wire. That's, that's indicative of basically creating the environment where crosstalk and uh, signal you know, jumped from this over here to over here. But that happens a lot less if you go perpendicular to any sort of noisy high current AC wire like you do with the um, heater wires. So when I run, basically you kind of visualize that there's this um, power section here. And when you run the wires directly and, and running to the power capacitors and everything else, that's a left to right straight across. And the heater wiring is actually going to go up and down. So uh, basically creating that perpendicular, theoretical, lowest, um, I, I guess, chance of there being some crosstalk and such. And in fact, I might even run off, because here's where the board is, I might go over the top and then come straight down just to avoid this section altogether. But anyway, so that's sort of what I'm going with. I, I did the little bridge jumpers here on the reverb boards. And I, I leave until like almost the very last thing I do on an amp, the running the heater wire up and over into the power tubes. So I'm, this is sort of where I'm going. Another thing I want to talk about real quick is the choice selection. I measured each pot, and if you looked at my bill of materials, my bomb, um, you're going to notice that there's a couple extra 250k um, pots in there, and that's by design. Because from what I've learned on the um, John Mayer 2 Rock SIG is that there's uh, there was an H on here. And I always kind of wondered what that meant. And it turns out that that means that the, that pot on that amp was measured high. And then on some of them, there was an L on the base pot that was measured, that was for low. So that was a low measurement. On this amp, since it's, it's a little bit of, of a brighter amp, and um, to compensate that visually, aesthetically... So folks want to kind of are used to using noon as sort of the neutral place to start when it comes to on their um, front panel, right? For your treble, middle, and bass. That's that's that feels natural, right? So we can artificially move that dial. So even though you're at noon, the the resistance could be a little bit more like this value, or it could be a little bit more like that value based on the measurement of this pot. So, so knowing that this amp is a little bright and, and the bottom end is, is a little bit, by today's standards, not as warm because, again, this amp was meant to be loud and clean. And the way to be loud and clean back in the day, and still to this day, with tube amplifiers is to roll off the bass quite a bit. So that sort of had the design um, but to make up for it in modern modern ears, if you will, or for those who are sort of seeking a lower volume um, warmth to it, I use a higher uh, measured pot. So you just measure this leg with that leg, and then you get your value. Um, so I prefer having the treble on the low end of measurement and the bass on the higher end of measurement. So you have 237 for this one, um, K resistance, total resistance, and then this one's 218 K total resistance. Um, all the other pots don't really matter that much with the Im impedance and things like that. They just don't matter as much. So, but this, these two do. 
Um, that will set up where your north is. That's why it's kind of hard when you see people comparing amps next, you know, side by side, and they're like, "All right, let's check the noon position of two of these amps together." Unless the the builder specified, um, you know, these sorts of same values. Again, th these are twenty percent tolerance, so they could be all over the place. Y you will have to adjust your um, knobs just slightly to accommodate that. So instead of like noon, it could be at one o'clock or it could be at eleven o'clock, um, really depending. So you might want to. Next time you're doing a side by side with two identical amps and they sound different, just try adjusting very slightly the the treble and the bass. See what happens. But anyway, um, hope this is useful. I'm gonna do a bunch of these videos for those who are starting builds for the first time, and hopefully give you some uh, pointers, some guidance, some direction on the approach and what to do, um, at least in, in my opinion. And if you have an alternative opinion, I want to hear about it. So please leave a comment below. Um, I'm totally receptive and I want to learn. Uh, and if there's anything that you want me to share or feel like it's worth sharing, um, I'll, I'll do that in my next video. So keep it coming, guys. This is, this is a lot of fun.